Hello and good afternoon from Portugal's lovely capital city Lisbon and welcome to my first tram video. Today we'll mainly be taking a look at what to expect from the city's famous Line 28 but first I thought we'd start on a bit of a digression and have a quick look at the Beaker Funicular. The Funicular is operated by two of these identical cars. Originally these were operated on a cable and counterweight system but nowadays the system is operated electrically. Honestly I have no idea when these cars date from so if you happen to know be sure to leave a comment but if I had to hazard a guess I'd say they're from the first half of the 20th century. The route between Calahis slash Combro at the top and Jorge de Sao Paulo at the bottom is just 283 metres or 928 feet. The route roughly takes 3 minutes to travel and in that time will go from 50 metres or 164 feet above sea level to just 5 metres or 16 feet meaning that our average incline will be a very impressive 15.9%. That's roughly a 1 metre decrease in elevation for every 6.2 metres travelled forwards. About halfway into our short journey on the Rua de Bica de Duarte Bello, which is the street the funicular travels on, there's a small passing loop where we pass our ascending and unfortunately rather vandalised counterpart. The last little bit sees us parting ways with the street as we enter the Rua de Sao Paulo station. Anyway, on to the main event. For our look at Line 28, I've come to Campo de Orica to start our journey. It seems that most people will do this route the other way around, starting at Plaza Marti Munich before either getting off along the way or ending up here. So I thought I'd start here in the hopes of having a bit of a quieter journey. Now, before we board and head across the city, here's a look at the trams used on Line 28. Note that this is a Line 25 tram, but the stock used on this and Line 28 are exactly the same. They are remodelados trams, which translates into English as refurbished. This is a reference to the fact that they were originally built between 1935 and 1940, before being overhauled in the mid-1990s. With the oldest of these trams now being over 85 years old, they are the second oldest still in regular passenger service in Europe, behind the ATM Class 1500s in Milan. And then I had to wait absolutely ages for a Line 28 tram to turn up, to the point that I was considering just filming Line 25 instead. But alas, a whole convoy of Line 28 trams turned up. I assume that there must have been some sort of blockage or something, and little did I know that this wouldn't be the last problem that we would encounter today. Now, all of Lisbon's trams, as well as the funicular, are operated by Carish, who also operate the city's buses. If you've pre-purchased your ticket, make sure to tap it on the reader as you board. It's also possible to buy single tickets on board from the driver, although note that they only accept cash. I'll talk more about tickets and their cost at the end of the video, but for now, let's take a seat. As is typical for older vehicles, I found that the seats were nice, soft and comfortable. And just like that, we're off. As we depart, let's just take a quick look at our route for today. Now, 
Well, it's a bit of a convoluted route today, as we depart Camporique and head east across the city centre. We first miss Martin Moniche by just a couple hundred metres, before looping back round to it. Our 7 kilometre or 4.3 mile journey is scheduled to take anywhere between 37 and 40 minutes, in theory at least. Line 28 is so popular because of how many of Lisbon's famous landmarks it passes. The first of these is Basilica de Estrela, which is a Roman Catholic church that opened all the way back in 1794. Part of the reason that such old trams are used on this route is due to how tight and steep many of the streets are. Most modern trams are far too big for the loading gauge, and large swathes of the route are too steep for vehicles with multiple bogies. And trust me, this isn't even the steepest bit yet. Should you wish to hop on or off throughout the route, you can do so at one of these yellow stop markers. Just make sure that line 28E is listed on the stop. And note, that if you're travelling on a single ticket, you'll need to buy a new one should you decide to get back on later. Unfortunately, it didn't take long at all for the tram to get very busy. Sadly, as a result of this, I couldn't move from one side to another to get shots of landmarks that were on the other side of the tram. So, sorry if I missed a few. Honestly, just look at how steep the street is at the moment. At certain points, it's not far off being as steep as the funicular, with gradients being well in excess of 10%. Line 28 also stops at Calarish, at the top of the Bica Funicular. Around Luis de Camois Square, we cross Line 24, which runs from just south of here and northwest. I must say, I'm also a big fan of the patent cobble used on the pavements. It really adds to the overall look of the city in my opinion. Now, heading downhill is just as fun as heading up. Trust me, you want to hope that the brakes are working beforehand though. Now, I pretty much missed Arco de Ro Augusta as we passed it, but I did head down there the next day. It's located next to Praça do Comercio, down on the banks of the River Tagus, and it's a beautiful spot on a sunny day. A short while later we pass Lisbon Cathedral, parts of which date back nearly 900 years to the year 1147. A 
few minutes later, we pass the statue of Saint Vicente, with some fleeting views of the Tagus below us. The double domed white structure in the background is the monastery of San Vicente de Fora, which will pass in a few minutes. Overall, these clunky old trams are a great way of seeing the sights of Lisbon. It's a really impressive route, and given the terrain that these trams have to overcome, I think it's amazing that they're still going strong after over 85 years. So, what about the cost? Now, buying a single on the tram will set you back 3 euros. However, if you have a Viva Viagen travel card, you can get a 24 hour ticket, which includes all of Lisbon's trams and funicular railways, as well as the metro and buses, for €6.40, which is exceptional value for money if you're going to be doing a fair bit of sightseeing in a day. The card is available from ticket machines at all metro stations. There's a one-off fee of 50 cents for the card, but you can reload it as many times as you like. You can also pay for a one-way tram ticket with the Viva Viagene card by tapping it on the reader, with this costing €1.50 per trip. For reference, the funicular that featured at the start of the video costs €3.80 if you buy a single. So, a great sightseeing trip aboard a beautiful heritage tram, and not to mention the funicular. But what did you make of the two trips featured here? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Well, we then hit a bit of a problem, as someone had decided to park their beamer just out with the dotted line, blocking the path of the tram. With the owner nowhere to be seen, the tram driver then had to call the police to get them to organise someone to tow the car, a process that would apparently take at least 45 minutes. As we were so close to the end of the line by this point anyway, I just decided to call it a day here. But do let me know if you enjoyed this and if you'd like to see more tram videos in the future in the comments below. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to help us out by giving it a like. If you're new to the channel, then be sure to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Monday and Friday. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on Monday.